Good morning. So yesterday after that four drive track, we were so tired. It was like quite nerve wracking, especially with the drone segment. You would have seen the drone battery was at the end like beeping and everything that was definitely not a relaxing end of this little segment, but that was um, good that everything went well at the end. We made it to a little free camp, not too far away. So we got back into reception for the full week. We had no reception. So that's quite nice to, you know, disconnect. But at the same time, when you come back, we do have to do a little bit of work, obviously. So that is why I wanted to film this little segment this morning, just to get you behind the scene, I guess, of working on the road full time and especially with YouTube, which is our main source of income. And I guess our main job, if you're wondering and if you're new to the channel. So we release weekly videos on Fridays. The great thing about YouTube is usually you can schedule them so if you have uploaded them in advance you can schedule at the time so for example here on the screen you will see I'll show you as well like a little bit the behind the scene of YouTube there so you can see the visibility and you can see unlisted at the moment so that only your patron can see the video we release them in exclusivity in advance for them but you can schedule it click and just add the date and the time which is such a brilliant feature when uh, especially on the schedule like us when we don't know if we're gonna have reception or not we can just put it and it does the work by itself but this time I knew we we're going to come back to civilization by the Friday so that's why I didn't do it it's still unlisted so what we did this morning with Chris we brainstormed the title of the video together which is actually much harder than you thought. There's a lot more thinking behind, a lot more of research in terms of keywords that may work or may not work. It needs to be catchy but not clickbaity too much. It's really much a hard work. But we agreed on this title together, which is good. And then you have to write a description. I just copy paste it usually, and you can see all of these links uh, on the first lines. They are all companies that we work with. So if you click on it and you use the discount code, not only you get the discount, but we also get a small percentage of the sale uh, or anything that you purchase. So that really helps us as well, which is great way to sustain our travel and support our channel. We've got our Patreon, we've got our stickers, which are just here. We actually had two stickers that will be sent today at the post office, which is really cool. I love, especially there is one to the US. Roy, if you're watching, thank you so much. And then we've got our Instagram account. So if you don't follow us on Instagram yet, it's the dot out that fit. Then if you scroll down a little bit, we've got the thumbnail. The thumbnail is probably the most important part of YouTube, surprisingly. So we usually take photos, dedicated photos for the thumbnail. We don't take screenshot of the video. So this photo that you can see here on the side, they just screenshot of the video. They're not really good. I can't imagine this one on the couch doing very well. So yeah, we've got like a little software on Adobe where we can put the photos together. We can add some title to it if we want. Recently, we've been a bit more, I guess, um, simple look, no title, like no, re no text on it. Then you can select which playlist you want to uh, get it into. Then you've got like all kind of like little um, settings. Then you have to add your tag. So it's any keyword that help the YouTube algorithm to find your video. So for example, there will be camping, spare fishing, off-roading, all kind of like general keywords like that. And then I go sometimes with a little bit uh, more target specific to the video or I'm trying like new things. I'm definitely still like trying to see what works, what doesn't. Then there's not much here to change. Um, yeah, it's all pretty much straightforward here. Then if you go back at the top on the side, there's the subtitles, which I do every time now with our new videos because I know a lot of people watch from across the world. So I usually edit them in English and then add other language. You can watch our videos with subtitles. Then after that, we've got the end screen. So I believe if you watch on your mobile or computer, at the end you'll see these things popping up. You've got the subscribe, you've got the patron, uh, all of like this little thing popping up. This is us adding that at the end. And then you've got those cards. So sometimes you will see as well on the computer or mobile on the right side of your um, screen appearing some little text and pop up 
And the last step with YouTube, which is probably, I guess, the most important one for us in order to get paid, is the video monetization. I just need to put it on. So usually it's off because we get ad-free videos for our Patreon. And then on the Friday, I change it to on so that we get ads, I guess, um, on your screens. And if you do watch the ads, we get paid for that. So this is how YouTube, we make income, is by watching the ads. So I know some of them are very long, which I really don't approve. And I wish YouTube was taking that in consideration, making them shorter so that they're not as hard to watch. But yeah, if you want to support the channel, that's one way that you can do it. So now the everything is set up for today. I'm just going to put it on schedule for today, which is the 18th of February at 3 p.m. our time. Boom. Done. Save. See you at 3 p.m. <laughs> what are you doing under the track? Good morning. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you tell that to me, Ange. So I did a special little project the other day. We have yet to use it. So we have got a diesel transfer pump. So that will transfer very, very simple. Just diesel from our primary, sorry, from our secondary tank into our primary tank. So I'm gonna try that for the first time. It's all wired up, it's all plumbed up. But again, super, super basic. I haven't modified any of our original fuel lines because I want to make sure in principle that it, that it sort of works. So uh, we're going to give that a crack. We've got 50 liters in our auxiliary tank that we were carrying around for a little bit. And I'm going to fire that into our primary 160 liter tank and see how we go because we're going to need it for this next trip that we're doing. Um, that's very remote and a long way away, so we're going to need more than 160 litres of range. So uh, let's try it. Okay, step one, open the battery box. Ta-da! Good. We've got this guy. Now there's not a huge amount of amperage draw on this pump because it is only, um, because it's running 24 volt basically, so the amperage draw is not actually that great. I've got it wired up to both batteries with a really basic switch here. So um, nice and easy. Now, here is the line, which I just have zip tied at the moment. <laughs> Bam, and that. Just a little rubber. Yeah, that's just a little rubber zip tie, so it's a reusable one, which I like. Very really cool. Now, this is just a proof of concept at the moment. This is not the, the, the final design. I just want to make sure that this is practical before I start um, really modifying things. Okay, now, as you can see, very sophisticated. <laughs> but it works. Well. <laughs> Don't speak too soon. Okay, so I've just got some tape covering basically an old, it's like a garden hose thing, but it's brass, so it shouldn't corrode too badly. So open up our main tank, our primary tank. Now we're gonna give this a whirl with the truck off and ideally, normally, I'll probably have the truck running when we do this. Oh, cool. <laughs> wow. Pretty um, high flow. Very high flow. So that was why we bought the transfer pump. It's a mechanical pump. So it's actually got a bunch of gears in it that rotate. It's loud, but effective. Designed for diesel. That works very well. I'm happy with that. So I can just leave that and just keep an eye on this tank and make sure it doesn't overflow, basically. <laughs> I've got my switch right here. Yeah, we don't really have a gauge or anything, right? Which is no. probably the most challenging part of the equation, but... It also means that we can fill up a jerry can with this. We could fill up another vehicle with it. So it's going to be cool if we do any convoy trips. We can basically be a, be a mobile bowser. <laughs> yeah, literally. So I do like this. And worst case, we can actually reverse the system. So if for some reason we need to fill up the other one, the other tank from here, 
we can do that too. All right, so. So these works. So well. I'm so happy with that. So we haven't used the full 50 liters. It was just kind of like a test. We'll go to uh, uh, a station flow, and Very refill. Should we refill both tanks full? Yeah, I think so. In preparation for our trip. Amazing. All right, and second choice for the day, restocking on fresh water. We still got around 250 liters of fresh water in our tanks, but because we're gonna go quite remote and we're in town already, there's a really convenient way to refill water if you're in Esperance, just next to the visitor center. So we're gonna get another 150 liters in our tank. And yeah, that will definitely do us for a little excursion coming up. So this is where we store our hose and our warmer filter. Chris is gonna connect it like so. Open the valve. And we got a very handy little screen so that we can monitor how much liters we're putting in the tank. And I put the timer on. Shouldn't be too long, it's going fast. Wow. And stop, 150. Six minutes and 42 seconds. Really good. Oh, was so fast, our fastest fill up to date. Back at Bowser's favorite place. <laughs> And here it goes. All right. $50 for the first tank. And now we have to drive the truck around to get the other one. Yay. Off it goes. <laughs> really good turning circle the mug and part two of the expensive fill up Ah, oh, I don't enjoy this part. <laughs> and exactly that. So to fill up this 200 liter tank, that would be well over a $300 mark, which, <laughs> my God, it hurts. Okay, pre-authorize again. All right, and another fill up. And knowingly in this petrol station, you have to pre-authorize an amount, which is fixed to $100. <laughs> It's like the fourth time I'm going there to authorize the pump so that we can get more diesel. But luckily, it's fast flow. That was probably our fastest inflating, just topping up. Just topping up a little bit as a proof of concept again. So you would have seen how frustrated we've been getting about filling these tires up. So the truck comes with a belt driven compressor. That's what um, does all the airlines. Uh, we've got three tanks here. This one's at 18 bar. The back two as far as I'm aware at seven and a half bar. We've been filling it up from the rear trailer glad hand here. So I bought that when we bought the MOG just from a truck shop and that's where we've been plumbing the airline into. Now with the engine driven compressor, 
in order to make the compressor work harder the only way you can do it is by increasing the revs of the mog and then have it idling at really high revs which as you can imagine is not enjoyable now we've never filled all four tires up on the side of the road with the truck on from really low to all the way up to road pressure but the time we went the closest we could was more than 40 minutes so as you can imagine it's just too long it's not good for the truck either i don't like having it idling really high and not doing anything because um i think it's just a good way to overheat it so what we've done is we've bought a just an adventure kings one so that's from four drive super center which is known to be a very budget quality brand but they do have a twin compressor which pumps out 300 liters a minute for very cheap can you remember how much it was Ange? like 150 like 150 dollars so no brainer there i don't expect it to last forever but um for that price can't really complain so what we've done is we've bought one of those that we'll probably use to pump up either the front or the rear tires together and then use the engine driven compressor to pump up whatever other two it is so hopefully we can double our speed of reinflating these tires because we've been kind of driving around almost hoping that we don't have to deflate and we don't want to be like that it's not how we ran our jeep so um and it's not great for the tires or the tracks or anything like that so um this is really good now the other bonus is when i get back to proper civilization again i'm going to plumb into this 18 bar main tank i'm going to plumb in a elbow to a standard nitto fitting so that way if we ever lose the compressor we can get to seven and a half bar in order to limp away from trouble because if we can't reach seven and a half bar the handbrake will not disengage on the trucks air over hydraulic brakes they won't disengage as a safety mechanism so we would be really stuck if our compressor just decided to cark it one day now they're not known for doing that you'll get a lot of signs before that happens but this could be a 39 year old compressor for all we know so um <laughs> now we've got i will have a way very soon in order to put this king's compressor straight into there and at least get seven and a half bar of pressure to limp out so um yeah we're excited about that because that was kind of stressing us out a bit with the setup so um yeah it's good and we found a very handy location for it <laughs> yes we bought a nice canvas bag from them extra so that we can Protect store it. that right there which fits <laughs> so nicely then all i need to do is strap to the actual jerry can holder so it can't vibrate away from us and that is all we need to do nice and lockable as well so no one can pinch it <laughs> i thought anyone would but you never know <laughs> you never know <laughs> and the final parts of the day involved a lot of research for coming itinerary when we go remote like this, obviously we have to make sure we had enough food, water, diesel, but we need to really know where we're going, trying to make sure that we know the condition of the roads, are they shut? So we check like the latest road closure, then we look at potential campsites. So as always, we always call on Google Maps. We had a look, Chris found some really nice air fishing bays potentially. Potential spare fishing. <laughs> so we look as well at the weather so we usually do screenshot of the tides of the wind and weather condition because we know we're not gonna have any internet so it's good to have that on your phone already when you head remote and yeah we are kind of like on the way and we'll start filming very soon the new episode that you'll be watching of the adventure going remote on the east of Esperance so we hope you like this little more day in the life video where we show a bit more practical and boring stuff. A boring stuff but as well realistic. It's part of the life on the road and we're still learning as well with our current setup so we want to be uh, quite transparent in that respect, show what works, what we're changing and yeah we'll see you on next week's episode. Cheers!